Hello, Chris Green here with the Flood Insurance Gear. Thank you for joining me in this training session today. We're going to talk a little bit about elevation certificates. We're going to be talking about what are they, when are they used, what are some of their purposes, who needs to sign them, and we're going to talk about all these different things in this quick video and this quick training. So let's get started today. The first section of an elevation certificate that we're going to talk about here is really going to be the address information. That's going to be the first section. Uh, section A. This is going to provide things like uh, builder owner's name, their address. It's going to provide the property description, a building use, even the longitude and the latitude of the property. It'll talk about crawl space and attached garages. How much of it is enclosed? How much of it is square footage? Uh, this is also where a lot of times you're going to have some of your flood vent information. And then section B is going to have your community information. This may have your county or your city, depending which community it is that you're participating in. It's going to have your flood zones, the base flood elevation. Remember, the base flood elevation is the level the FEMA thinks flooding could come to. Remember, if you're using this for a flood zone change, you're going to want the lowest adjacent grade of your property to be above the base flood elevation. We usually recommend six inches to a foot. And then down here now, Section C. You know, you've got Section C or E. Then one of the other needs to be filled out. Risk rating 2.0, most are being filled out by C. This is going to tell things on the elevations of the property. We're talking about things like top of the bottom floor on Section A. You know, the next highest floor. We're talking about location of the servicing equipment, like a furnace, and air conditioner. We're talking about lowest adjacent grade, which is the lowest portion of the ground that's touching the building. This is really what's used for flood zone changes. And many private companies, this is what they use compared to the base flood elevation when using these elevation certificates. But FEMA generally now is using the lowest rated floor. Now, post risk, risk, risk rating 2.0, if you have a crawl space, this might be the floor above the crawl space now because of how they're using lowest first floor height. This is also going to be showing you where your highest suggestion grade is and different things like this. And remember, there's really two main people that need to fill this out. Either a surveyor or usually a professional engineer that will have to sign off with their seal and approval that FEMA will have to see in order to accept this. It also has to show that it's a finished structure to be used for a flood zone change generally. Other sections that might be if C is not filled out is E. This is more traditional. Uh, that was used if it's an older property or an elevation certificates not extremely new And this kind of concludes some of the basics of an elevation certificate. So now let's answer some questions about elevation certificate so the first question is Are elevation certificates required to get flood insurance with the national flood insurance program? post risk rating 2.0 elevation certificates are not required any longer. However, they can still benefit the rate. In fact, you could get one six months down the road and it can still benefit your rate mid-term. It's one of the benefits of having them. Now, some private companies do require these, so it's important to ask your carrier if they're going to require this. The other thing that elevation certificates can be used for is flood zone changes. This is very beneficial, as you do have to usually have one of these. Your lowest adjacent grade has to show above the base flood elevation. So those are some of the things with elevation certificates. You know, it's usually a surveyor, a professional engineer that has to do them. You have to submit them to FEMA. FEMA actually has to have them on file for the majority of Florida. But you no longer have to have them to get flood insurance. That's important to understand. So if you've got further questions about elevation certificates, you can visit our website, floodinsuranceguru.com. Remember, we're here to really answer any of your flood insurance questions you may have when it comes to either doing flood zone changes or getting flood insurance at the right premium to make sure that you're protecting your investment, satisfying the bank's needs, and having the peace of mind of knowing you have coverage in place. Remember, everyone's in a flood zone. It just matters how long it takes water to get to you. My name is Chris Green, founder of the Flood Insurance Gear. We want to say thank you for tuning in to this video on elevation certificates.